All right, so let's start with the album itself, the, um, the cover and the spines. So what we're making here is, um, as you saw in the walkthrough of the completed album, is a, a trifold um, hard folio. Um, I'm calling it a hard folio because it doesn't have a lot of pages, uh, but what it does have is a hard, heavy chipboard um, for the outside, for the covers. Um, normally I would do paper for folios or um, the lightweight chipboard, but I chose to do it this way. So what you're gonna have, and this is done in the lay flat method, which I will um, have a link in the description of my video below if you don't already know how to do the lay flat. I already have my pieces together. Um, I have a couple that still need to be taped, but I will walk you through um, what you will need. So three sheets of heavy chipboard at seven and a half by seven and a half. And then you need two that are one and a quarter by seven and a half. So I've already glued down my spines in um, with the black artisan cardstock. And for that, for these, for this size, um, you need um, four and a quarter by nine and a half pieces, uh, excuse me, pieces of the black artisan to do your spines. And you'll do that twice. And then you will have nine and a half by nine and a half sheets of the um, Black Artisan cut for these. Now this one, like I said, is already done, but I'm gonna go ahead and do these two with you and then we'll put the album together. I'm gonna pull my scoreboard out of the frame for a moment. So I've already folded these around. I will show you what I do. I like to fold my paper and get it started around the chipboard when I'm doing the lay flat method. It just makes it easier when I'm doing my mitering. And I want to make sure that I miter where that cross section is there, but I don't wanna go all the way up to my chipboard. Um, I always say about an eighth of an inch, so make sure where you see that cross, that you go above that about an eighth of an inch. And I will hold this a little closer um, so you can see down in there we have paper. So I, do this all the time. So I'm pretty quick at um, eyeballing where these scissors need to cut, but not everybody is. So there is that one. And I'm gonna go ahead and miter this one. And like I've said in the past videos, um, if you cut not enough, it's way better than cutting too much. And I can already tell that I haven't cut enough on this one. You just want to make sure that you can kind of see that. See how there's an X still there? Um, but don't cut not enough. You can always go back in and cut a little more off if you have to, like I just did. Um, but you can't add paper. So I actually can show you because the one that I already completed, <clears throat> excuse me, pollen is really getting to me. Um, I cut too much and this is what happens. I've used a black Sharpie to cover this and there will be paper on this. So it won't be super obvious, but um, that's what happens if you cut too much paper when you're mitering. All right, so let's get these put together. I'm gonna just grab some score tape and I like to run my score tape all the way around that chipboard first. And like I said, if you already know how to do the lay flat, feel free to skip this portion of the video. And we will be doing um, the inner portions of the album next. But I'm also going to show you the papers that I've used um, for decorating the cover of this album as well. The two pieces that show on the outside. One will flip in and we will have magnets. This will close with a magnet. This portion is probably really boring to watch. Yeah. 
and you can use um, score tape on your flaps too. But the reason that I don't is I like the long lasting effect of liquid adhesive. Um, I just think it works better when you're doing albums. Um, another little tip is to, when you cut your chipboard and you get ready to decorate it, make sure that you, if you're a person who um, is aware of the bend of the chipboard, chipboard, just like paper, has a better bend on one plane than it does on the other. So you always want to have your more wobbly, as you, I guess you could put it, uh, top to bottom. The stiffer should be side to side, okay? And if it doesn't bother you, this chipboard that I'm using, um, it's kind of the same. It, it is a little bit less uh, going side to side, uh, but it's pretty close. So it just depends on the chipboard that you're um, using. Now I'm just gonna peel off all of my tape. All right, and then we're gonna do two sides at a time, just like if you, like I said, if you are familiar with the lay flat method, um, then you already know what I'm doing. I'm just gonna add glue and try not to get it all over the place. I have a hair that wants to attach to everything on my desk here, I'm not quite sure what's going on with that. And then I start in the middle and then really start to work that glue towards the ends. And you will need to have a rag handy because the glue will kind of spew out at you. And then just take your bone folder and push up and in that excess paper. This is where you would probably want to um, decide if you cut too much or not enough. Uh, this will tell you at this point here. You just want to, and you can do this with your fingernail as well. I'm going to do the other side. Get not a, a lot, but enough uh, glue on that edge. And I like to put it down up against the chipboard in that scored area um, because it helps the paper bend. Uh, it breaks down the fibers a little bit better. Again, I'm going to just push in that excess paper. Get a nice flatness to it. And then we can do our other sides. You will, after you've made a few albums using the lay flat method, you will find that you can eyeball it pretty, pretty well when it comes to the mitering. And another little trick here, <clears throat> excuse me, wow, <clears throat> that pollen count um, in Oregon right now is really bad because it's hotter than it normally is. We have record breaking temperatures right now. And it's really stirring up the pollen. Um, so anyways, what I was gonna say is you can also use your bone folder. If that paper, when you're doing your, um, pushing down all the paper, use this and just kind of push that down as well. And it'll also help shape that corner. Cause you can see, I still have a little extra paper there, but you can push it down with your bone folder. And this last flap on this one. And I can see, see I'm gonna have too much paper there, so I am gonna try to push this in a little bit more so that I don't have such a bad overlap. There we go. Smooth all that out, and then I am just gonna go back and just kind of push those corners down kind of and then I like to take my bone folder and just go all the way around the edges get a nice I use the back side nice flat edge 
Okay, so now I have two of those. I'm going to finish by doing this one. This one I will hyperspeed for you. Okay, so now we have our three seven and a half by seven and a half. I have them marked top and bottom, so I know where I'm going with them. And then I have my two one and a quarter by seven and a half, which I've already set up for. Um, these are our spines. And what you want to do once you have these, again, if you don't know how to do the lay flat method, um, you can watch the video that I linked below to show you how to do this. I'm going to go ahead and do my mitering here. Not using the greatest scissors for this. Get all this mess picked up here, and we will attach these. So I'm going to grab my scoreboard and bring it back into frame, and I like to put mine sideways. <clears throat> so if you're working with one that has the framing, I put my stuff in this way. So I'm going to grab my first one of these and my first spine. And what you're going to want to do is place your spine on your scoreboard. Make sure you're at top and bottom on here. And I did the same with these, so I need to make sure they are as well. And hopefully you can see I have that lined up right there, and that's where I want it. I'm going to run some score tape about a quarter of an inch in from the spine itself. on both sides and you don't want to put it all the way up against the spine same goes with the glue we're going to add because you don't want it to show and when you bend your book you can imagine some of this this um, paper will show when it's bent open or when it's excuse me when it's closed so you just want to make sure that you are yeah that's the top that you don't put it all the way up against the spine. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna add glue in all of that space, right? And you can use uh, the score tape here as well. And then I'm gonna add a little glue onto the score tape as well. Again, making sure I'm at my top and bottom. And I'm gonna line this up and make sure that it is going almost about an eighth of an inch away from the spine itself. There we go. Then you can flip it over and burnish it out. Get rid of any excess glue. And burnish it again with a bone folder. I want to make sure we get a nice tight hold there. And don't do any bending just yet. Now we're going to flip this upside down. Remove the score tape. Add glue. Sorry, my cat has decided to come in here and meow. Hi, Whitey. Again, make sure we're at our top and bottom. This is our next piece. But remember that we're turning this upside down. So my top and bottom actually needs to be this way. 
So this is actually going to go on here upside down. Slide this over. We're going to do the exact same thing that we did there. Making sure our top piece is facing down. And why does this seem bigger? Let me see here what's going on. It's just my eyeballs. All right, we are going to line that one up. Boy, that one seems a little bit taller. It shouldn't be, but it's all right. So now you have your first set put together. Now we are going to bring in our other spine. We're going to do the same thing to add the third piece. I'm going to set this off to the side for a moment. And we're going to do the same thing. We're going to add score tape about a quarter of an inch away from that spine on both sides. No, excuse me, not on both sides. Yes, on both. So we're going to put that score tape on both sides. Again, like I said, about a quarter of an inch. It doesn't have to be perfect. You just want to make sure that it's not going to show um, when you close and open the book. All right. Let's burnish that score tape down and remove it. And then we will add some glue. And bring our book in that we've already put together. We're going to add this one on. Now you already have your first um, seven and a half by seven and a half. So I'm top and bottom here. Let me make sure. No, I need to do this this way. So I'll bring this in as well as I can. This into camera view. And I'm going to put this this way because I want to make sure my tops and my bottoms all line up nicely. And this one's being kind of a bugger. All right, here we go. Go ahead and burnish all of that out. Get rid of your excess glue and make sure that's all nice and flat. And then I'm going to do that one more time on this one. We're going to bring in our other one. So this one, make sure that this is our top. Some people um, really don't see a difference in the bend. So you don't have to keep checking if it doesn't bother you. I just want to make sure that my tops and bottoms line up. So I kind of like the fact that the bend um, is a little sturdier one way. And we are going to line this up right there. All right. So now, as you can see, you have this big, long piece. Once we get everything burnished out. You will have three sections that are seven and a half by seven and a half, and then your two spines that are a quarter inch by seven and a half inches, or excuse me, one and a quarter inches um, by seven and a half inches. So once you know that everything is burnished, I'm gonna remove my scoreboard here. And then we are going to, see it already folds without having to do a lot of burnishing, but we're going to add paper, we're going to add magnets, and that is going to make a difference, okay? So, 
let's grab what you need here is two pieces of the black artisan cardstock and these are going to measure five and a quarter by set or excuse me yes five and a quarter by seven and you can do seven and a half it's going to go all the way to the top so i would say seven um and three eighths on these okay Okay, so I have those pieces ready, and I apologize. I said five and a quarter um, by, by seven and three eighths, but you can do four and a quarter. Um, basically, it's the same size as, excuse the noise over here, because my die is falling over. It's basically the same size that you cut for your spines, which was four and a quarter, but I did five and a quarter, and that's fine. I'm just gonna kind of eyeball um, to get them on here nice and straight. It just adds a little bit more. Um, to it. It's not any big deal. Um, if you don't like that extra bulk, then you can cut, you know, I'm going to go ahead and cut them down. I'm just going to grab um, a cutter from under here that's easier to grab. And we will switch these to four and a quarter. I'm just going to cut an inch off of these. Because why not? It's less bulk, the better. Okay. So now I have two four and a quarter by seven and three eighths. And as you can see, they're going to be the same width pretty much as this. So it's easy to, to see where you're putting it. So I'm just going to go ahead and glue these down. And I'm going to do this one at a time. This is a little tricky because you don't want your paper to lift when you're trying to burnish this. So um, I do suggest that you put these down one at a time. And you're going to have about an eighth of an inch at the top and about an eighth of an inch um, at the bottom of your paper here. So go ahead and burnish it all out, but don't do any bending just yet. You want to give that glue just a little bit of time, at least in my experience, to just kind of tack to the paper. Really burnish it where the, where the uh, spine is. I'm going to go ahead and put my other one on and that will give that one time to dry enough. You can also do a continuous piece of paper. Um, this is rather long when it's open. Um, we have 21, 22, there's like 26 inches here. I'm not doing math in my head, so um, I'm probably off a little. But because it is so long, I mean, that would take a lot of bending and manipulating of the paper uh, even more to get it on there straight. So I just prefer to do it in the middle like so. It also makes it a little more stable. You have a little thickness in here where the spine is. I did get this one just a teensy bit longer, but it's all right. I just think it's off a little bit, but that's okay. There are no mistakes in crafting. Usually happy ones if there are. All right, I'm gonna let that one dry so you can see how the paper's trying to buckle. And I'm gonna kind of angle this so that I can show you, make sure I'm in the camera. So this is our first one. I let it dry a little bit. And now I just wanna find that score where our spine is. And start to bend. Don't push too hard because you don't wanna crack your paper. But you will see that the paper will try to resist you. And start with this bottom one, I'm not glued all the way down there. Start with the one closest to the middle and just push down and bend as you're pushing. Again, don't push too hard. You don't want to crack your paper um, after getting this far. It is not fun. I've done it many times. And just kind of work that until you can bend it and make sure nothing is lifting. And you can move to the next one. We're gonna do the same thing. We're just gonna push kind of down and start bending the book as you are running your bone folder down there. And then you'll have this nice weld. Here. 
Do the same thing on the other side. I'm going to do it upside down so I can get this into the camera view. See, we're still, this is why I let it dry a little longer. This one is not quite dry, so my paper wants to buckle on me. But just remember, it is just paper. You don't want to force it or it will tear. I'm going to give it just a second here. Have some coffee. And I'm going to go ahead and just start the main, just grabbing the bone folder and pushing down where that, those score lines are. It's not really score lines, but where the paper meets, the spine meets the piece. All right, it looks like we're good. Now we're going to do that again. We're going to start bending and pushing this in at the same time time that we're bending. Do that with this one. And you will kind of feel resistance until you get a good score in there. But once you do, this is our top and bottom. This is going to be our cover. So this is what you will have. Super fun. And we will be putting a magnet inside here and over on this under the papers. And that is how this will close. All right, let's move on to the inside, the fun stuff. Actually, you know what? I'm going to show you what I'm going to be doing with the cover first really quick so that you can see. I am going to go ahead and clip this closed so that I can show you. So what I have done... Uh, to get some good use out of the paper and make sure that I used it all, is I am going to paper piece my covers. And what I mean by paper piece um, is I'm grabbing uh, a couple different papers and I'm doing a side line. So let me just grab one of them and I will show you. So what I have for the each cover, just two of them, the inside one here underneath will be completely different. But the cover and the back will be a mirror image. So what you will need to cut for those, or I can show you, you can use any papers you want, and if you're using a different collection, um, this doesn't pertain to that. Uh, from the Be Happy Echo Park collection, I have chosen to use, um, in addition to the dark yellow, the blue, and the green, I am using, those are the solids, I'm using this paper here, which is called Let's Be Friends, okay? And I'm using the side with all the pattern. And then the dots is from Happy As Can Be, okay? I just wanna show you those. So for the first piece, which will be the green solid paper, I've cut a piece at five and a half by seven and three eighths, okay? That is going to be my first mat, and it'll sit just like so. Then for the light blue, I did five and three eighths by seven and a quarter. And that one will go on here, okay? And I'm not putting these on here exact. Um, I'm, they're not glued, so. Then our, our decorative paper is at five and a quarter by seven and eight, and that one goes on top here. And then for this fun side here, I've taken a piece of the dark yellow that is one and five eighths by seven and a quarter. Sorry, the green, is it the green? Yes, I'm sorry, it's the, the light yellow. The light yellow with the green on the back, it's one and three quarters by seven and three eighths. And that is gonna lay right here. We're leaving a little bit of black in between the two. It's kind of hard to do when I'm not gluing them, but I don't wanna glue them just yet. Uh, then we have, let's see, that's supposed to be green. I don't know why I Put that down with that side. Then we have the dark yellow instead of the blue here. You could do the black as well. 
Uh, this is going to be one and five eighths by seven and a quarter. That will lay on here like so. Like I said, I'm not gluing these at the moment, so they're not going to want to lay exact to show you. And then our polka dotted paper is um, one and a half by seven and an eighth. And that one will lay right there. So you get this nice, fun pattern. And I will be putting something on the cover uh, as well. Uh, you will have seen that in my walkthrough. So you'll do that twice. Um, when we do this on the back side, however, so you have it on this side, we want these to meet. So when you do the back one, you will put your papers opposite. So this will go here and this. So make sure both of your smaller pieces, if you're doing this paper piecing method, um, face your spine. Okay. All right. So I'm going to gather up some stuff and show you how I'm doing the inside. Then we're going to assemble a page system that will be in the middle portion of the album. And I can show you, um, I've already added my papers um, to my album. Um, for the spines, I did a double mat just like I did the front and the back. And because we have a one and a quarter inch spine, we have a one and an eighth inch by seven and three eighths inch of the green. And then I did one inch by seven and, an, and a quarter of the blue. And then the decorative paper is seven eighths by um, seven and an eighth. Okay, and I did that on both spines. So what we're doing now is we're gonna build something that's gonna go inside of here, all right? And how we're gonna do that Yes, we are going to have a system that flaps open a couple different ways. So you have a sheet that is six and a quarter by seven and a quarter. Um, that will go underneath. Then we have some doors. These are both four and a quarter by seven and a quarter. And this is my waterfall pieces. Okay. So for the two smaller pieces, the four and a quarter by seven and a quarter, we are going to score these at half of an inch. On opposite sides so half of an inch on the right or the left side and then you're going to score at these are four and a quarter so you want to go to three and three quarters to score half of an inch on your right side and then these are going to go inside of the book now these ones I will miter it's just a preference you don't have to do it And I'm going to pull my scoreboard out for a moment, grab my book, and show you where these are going to go. So open your book so everything, your top is here, your bottom is here. This is our middle portion. These are going to go inside here. So right along that score line. So go ahead and fold over your half inch mitered flap and give that a nice burnish. I'm gonna make sure that it's nice and flat. And these will go, like I said, on either side here. And then we will have a flap up and a flap down um, that will be on opposite sides. So when you do this, grab your glue and add it to the half inch and you're going to have about an eighth of an inch on the top and an eighth of an inch on the bottom of your book here go right up to the spine but excuse me the score line of where your spine is but don't go over it do not overlap that okay I'm going to go ahead and burnish that down I'm going to do the same thing with the other side Add glue and normally I would decorate these prior um, because I usually do a prototype but I didn't do one this time so I'm just gonna do it and then decorate so I want to push this up take this the second one so that my door aligns with this door I'm gonna put it right next to it and then I can push it down and we will have equal 
um, make that's a quick way to make sure that these are equal. Okay. Okay. Hi, everyone. So I um, normally, as I stated before, make a prototype or a practice run when I do my projects. And I did not do that this time. Uh, rather, I just kind of created this album as I went. And so even though I have captions and a couple title screens explaining um, some of the changes that I made, I wanted to make sure that it was very clear for you. So I'm going to do a uh, kind of a mock-up um, to show you how I added the magnetic closure in the middle. I'm just going to use some bright paper. Um, so what I'm talking about is the inside here on our middle section. Um, originally this was just going to magnetically close, but I added this fun little element here with the bands. So this is what I'm talking about when I say uh, magnetic band closure is these two pieces. And then our two six by seven and a quarter panels here with our photo uh, mats on them are also placed by half inch hinges. So in order to um, save bulk and save you time, I just wanted to do a quick mock up and insert it in my video just to show you how to do these bands prior um, to placing these down. So what I am going to do is I have, like I said, I cut some kind of bright colored paper out. Um, because I wanted to make sure it was quite visible on camera. So I have this bright yellow, which is fitting because of the B paper, of course. So we're going to take our um, two six by seven and three quarters, and we're going to score those, one of them at half of an inch across the top, and one of them at half of an inch across the bottom. So at seven and a quarter, okay? And then I do believe I, I remember if I mitered these or not, but I'm going to go ahead and do so. So where you did the score, I'm just going to miter these really quick. This paper is super bright and cheery, that's for sure. This is just some cardstock I have in my stash that I use for stuff like this um, and prototypes. Um, so you have those two pieces. This will be our bottom and this will be our top, okay? And then you're going to have two bands that are one and a quarter by four and a half. And we're going to score one of those on the top at half of an inch. And we're going to score the other one on the bottom at half of an inch. So uh, three and three quarters. All right. And these can be mitered as well. Mitering is a matter of preference. You don't have to do it, but I um, feel like things move better when I miter. So I have those two little flaps, okay? And then of course the four and a quarter by four and a quarter that you will put a four by four journaling card also is there. So I've cut a piece. I'm gonna, I'm gonna pull my scoreboard out of the frame here really quick. I've cut a piece of seven and a half by seven and a half paper. Now this is just to um, mimic our panel inside the book. So we would have our doors here and I've got a hair that wants to get in my way of filming today. So this is what you have. You'll already have your doors on here and you won't have any decorative paper on this yet. This is to represent that middle panel. I'm gonna open the book here and just show you. This middle panel here of the book, okay? And we're gonna be adding these two flaps and these two flaps and this little piece here, okay? So I'm trying to find my magnet in this one. It's around the middle, okay. And that just holds everything closed. So this, this is our book. The first thing you're gonna wanna do is fold your bands on the score line and burnish those down. Okay, and then these would just simply go, this is my top one, and add glue to that, and I'm going to find about the middle of the page, I'm going to use my Tim Holtz ruler here, and find my middle, I'm going to be, oh, we're going to 
would be right about here. So I'm gonna put that right about the middle of the page. Now mine might not be perfect because um, like I said, I'm doing this kind of last minute. I just want I'm, I have, like I said, I have captions and I have some title screens, but I want to make sure that you understand what I'm talking about. So, um, and beginner crafters may not understand that. So do the same thing with the bottom one and just kind of line it up with your top so that you can see where it's at, but make sure you get it to the bottom of the page there. But we want to make sure it lines up with this one, okay? And then you'll take your 4x4. Four four. That's going to go on the band. So this will be glued to this, okay? And then you'll add magnets here and here. And that is how this will close, okay? So I'm just going to go ahead and put this on here. I'm just going to add glue to this bottom one here and place this so it goes ends up being right about the middle of the page and the middle of those bands is where you want this to go okay make sure you get any glue on there now once you have those placed open up your bands okay because we want these to go um, you can do under or over either one, or excuse me, you can't do over because it would make these not move. So you need to make sure these are open and then grab your top six inch by seven and three quarters that we scored at half of an inch across the top. And we are just going to add glue to that half of an inch flap. Mine seems a little bit crooked, but... And you want to also place this right around that middle. Leave about the same amount of space on both sides. And place it down and make sure this still moves. And you're going to end up with it kind of buckling a little, but you just want to work it so that it, it'll go over that flap. Open that back up, and I'm just going to burnish down my glue there. And then we're going to do the same thing with the bottom one. So just fold over your flap where we scored that half of an inch, burnish that nicely, add your glue, and place that one in the middle and just kind of line it up with that top one. You want to make sure these line up, and mine do not, so I want to make sure. You want to make sure that this goes above the score line of your little bar. Um, if it doesn't, then it won't turn. And we need it to turn. So I'm going to add that again and just make sure this time I'm above that little folded area. I think part of the problem is I'm using super cheap cardstock to show you this. And um, it's kind of off as far as the sizing. I cut it correctly, but it's, it's wonky. So we just want to make sure that everything is going to fold correctly and again make sure you're above where this bar is and you need to put everything on here as straight as possible um, if you do not it won't open and close as easily and I think I found the problem there we go so just go back in and push all your score lines down make sure everything is lining up and then you are going to add a magnet here. I'm not going to do that on this because I'm not going to waste a magnet, but you would place a magnet here and then your other magnet would go on the back side of this and meet this, okay? And there you will have that middle section. You'll have your doors closed on top of these, um, but you have that's how you put the band magnetic band system on that I did. So I hope that helps. Um, I just, like I said, I didn't want anybody to get confused by the captions. So I just added this video really quick and inserted it in the tutorial. For the waterfall, you're going to have um, pieces that measure six and a quarter by four and a three quarters. And these are all going to get scored across that top at half of an inch. Now you can put these in either way. Um, you can do a side waterfall 
and put four by six portrait pictures, or you can do a lower waterfall. Now I will tell you, you have seven and a half inches of space here. So depending on where you start your waterfall, if you're doing these at um, that four and a quarter is what they'll end up. You'll have four and a quarter by six and a quarter, which is perfect for four by six photos. So let's go ahead and score these and then I will tell you how many you can fit there. I just kind of cut them um, and I didn't really measure. I usually do, but I didn't this time. So I'm gonna do my half inch. And I'm doing these in black. Go ahead and get a half inch score line across the top of each one of these. And then I will know how many you can fit. Craft as we go. So I'm gonna do this light blue artisan that I have. And I'm gonna to go to seven and an eighth. We have seven and a half by seven and a half. So you wanna to go to seven and three eighths by seven and three eighths. And that will be our mat. Um, if you're matting like I am. Like I said, I'm not going to double mat the inside. Just the outside was double matted. And then I'm going to pick a paper for the inside for to put on top of that. And I am going to choose um, this really pretty wild floral uh, because it's going to be a background. So I'm good at leaving it. This one is called Happy Floral. It's very happy. So we're going to do seven and an eighth. No, excuse me, seven and a quarter by seven and a quarter put away what I have see this is a very pretty paper I love this paper um, well, we're going to do that I'm going to use this blue on all three probably of my um, at least these two outer ones because it's very similar uh, to the light blue that comes in the um, solid pack and that will go down here like so. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put this paper down. This is the light blue artisan. I think, I'm pretty sure that's what it's called. It's just a light blue. And I'll have to check and see if this is still um, available in the store. I know some of the artisans have gone away, sadly. Um, I happen to have quite a bit of this one. We're just going to put that down, leave a little bit of that black showing all the way around. There we go. A little off down here. There we go. Okay, and then our patterned paper is next. Well, that laid right down for me. Sometimes they lay down nice and straight. Other times I have to manipulate the paper. That eyeballed right on there. Okay, I'm just gonna make sure that there's no excess glue and that all my corners are sticking. So there we have that. Now I'm gonna add a pocket um, that I can put something in. This just needs to be a small, tuck spot pocket. You don't want anything too tall. We're just going to take one of the journaling cards from the collection, uh, make a nice little insert, and that's going to be what is going to hold this closed. So I've got a piece of my black artisan here, and we are going to make this. We don't want more than probably an inch. It's just going to be a tuck. So that being said, I'm going to grab a cutter here and I'm going to cut this down to an inch and 
a quarter. And I'm doing a quarter instead of a half because I do not want, um, I want the pocket to be not, not too um, opening. If you do a half inch gussets, then it makes it very, um, it opens more and then it won't hold as tightly. So we have a seven and a quarter inch page, which is um, what, our seven and a half inch page. So we need this to be seven and a half plus a half. So it's gonna be eight in order to score a quarter inch on both sides, okay? Got my scoreboard over here. And I am gonna score this lengthwise at one quarter of an inch. And then I'm gonna score it this way as well at one quarter of an inch. And then again on the other side at one quarter of an inch. Okay. to avoid a catastrophe over here with my cutters and stuff sitting on my chair. I don't want them to fall. So I'm going to go ahead and miter these corners like we do with any tuck pocket and burnish all of my, fold and burnish all of my score lines. Do a nice crisp pocket here because this is going to need to be as flat as you can get it. And this will just position up against that blue paper. Make sure that you're still able to fold your book and we will add glue. And I will embellish this pocket as well uh, with a strip of the paper. Once I get my scraps out so we are going to go over right next to the score line of the spine, but not in it. And all the way to the bottom. Okay. You need to be sure that you put this on here nice and straight. And if it goes over a little bit, make it go over towards the opening, if that makes sense. So if you put it right on your blue paper and then go over, It'll be right at that edge, which is what you want. You don't want it to get in the way of your book opening and closing. So as you can see here, it does not. So just had to be sure of that. And I am not straight. I need to straighten out a little bit here. There we go. And see now you can see it's just a little tuck spot. And so when we have our waterfall on here, this will act as a place we can stick a bifold insert and it'll hold our waterfall down, okay? So now I need to decide what I think would look good on this. And I have quite a bit of that black and white. Um, in fact, I have a strip that's perfect of that black and white. And I'm not gonna, I'm not going to uh, mat this. I'm just gonna put a strip of this on. And this is, or maybe, I might have some, yeah, let's do this. So this is, again, seven and a half. So we want um, seven and three eighths. Pull out my cutter. I'm gonna cut this down to seven and three eighths. And then we have an inch here is what we did. So we want seven eighths of an inch. Not always the easiest thing to line up on a cutter. Um, I think I got it there. But it is doable. All right. So you should have seven eighths by seven and three eighths. And that's just going to go right on there perfectly. Add some glue. I feel like I'm doing a live because I am pretty much doing this as I go. But you've probably already seen the walkthrough of the finished book, so it is all right. All right, put that down. 
And where did my rag go? Get rid of all that excess glue and try not to let this slip around too much because it'll slip right off of here. There we go. So I did not use Artisan for these. I'm not quite sure. I used some black paper from my stash. I don't know why I did that, but I did. So let's go ahead and start these. So this is where mine is going to go. I want to start it at that blue paper. So we still have that black at the top. And again, I want to make sure that I'm centering this quite well. Okay. And then it's going to give you about a half of an inch is what you should have on either side. And I do. So that is about where I'm going to put that. Okay. Just making sure they line up at this point. I would suggest Artisan for your waterfalls as well. Um, I just did not quite have enough, so I think that's why I um, opted to use this other. So I'm going to set my half inch um, spacer bar here, and that's going to give me a nice guide to make sure that I get this on here nice and straight. Nice and straight. There is our first waterfall page. That is that, and I am going to go ahead and add paper now. Um, we are going to have a waterfall here and a water uh, pocket here, and then we will have our pocket pages that will attach. So for your pocket pages, you're going to want two one inch by seven and a quarter inch pieces. And these need to be folded and then mitered. These are gonna hold your pocket pages. These are just little L hinges um, that we're gonna use to add our pockets in. So we're gonna go ahead and miter these. Just look at a nice angle on them. And those are gonna go inside the book like so. So I'm gonna put one on this side and one on this side. You can do them either way you want. Um, I'm gonna put mine so that they are probably right next to the back pages. I'm just checking here to see what I like better. And you wanna put these so your angles are inward on the when you put them down. And I may add an extra page or two. I'm not quite sure yet. Let me see. I'm going to go ahead and put this hinge down. You can do it right smack in the middle, too, if you um, prefer that. But I'm going to put mine right pretty close to that spine area. Trying to align it with this pocket here because I want to... Um, Make sure that it lines up like a page. So go ahead and minder that, get that all down. And I actually should have put that a little over further, so I'm going to do that. And again, I'm going to add paper so my little boo boos aren't going to matter. Probably want to go over about a quarter of an inch so that you have space because we have a waterfall going here and you want to make sure that you have space for it. So just grab, if you have the spacers, I have my handy dandy spacers here. I am, let's see, this is a half inch. I'm going to put this in a half an inch just because of the fact that I do have a waterfall going back here. So I'm going to line this up and I'm going to set this right up against that to give me that half inch of space. And again, I'm going to cover my boo boo with paper. So. I don't need to worry. So it's pretty much right in the middle. Um, it gives me a half an inch on this side and a little more on this side. And then, as you can see, our little pocket. If we put the top opener back here, it'll go right on like this, like so. And you'll have a pocket here and plenty of space for the waterfall. Easy peasy.
And we're gonna notch that out, but I'm gonna decorate mine first. And then you just decide where you want the front one, depending on what you're gonna put in here. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and put my hinge on here. Again, I am just going to um, fold on that score line of my hinge and nicely miter my corners. And then I'm gonna grab my half inch again and I'm gonna do that half inch from here. So they're both kind of in the middle this way. I actually only need a quarter there. That way if I decide to add another pocket, I have it. So I'm gonna grab my quarter inch tool here. Add glue to my little hinge. And I am gonna place that down. Oops. I'm sliding all over the place here. Yeah, I have a nice quarter inch space here and I have an inch over here. Um, so if I wanna add anything else, I can. Lots of room. And again, um, if we put our side pocket page here, it's going to go right over that. And I need to miter my corners just a little bit better on this actually. So I would suggest making your hinges, uh, at least for the side, um, for the pages, uh, a little bit shorter. Mine are just a wee bit too long, I'm noticing. So I am gonna pull this up and I'm gonna snip off a little bit. Just make these seven and eighth rather than seven and a quarter. But if you've already cut them, you can do what I did and just kind of pull up the corner and cut it off and your pocket page should still fit just fine. So I'll double check for you here. Yes, perfect that way. Just like so. And then All right, so let's make the pocket pages first that will go inside. So we're going to have one pocket page that is top opening and one that is side opening, okay? So to make the side opening, this is what you will end up with. You need two sheets of black artisan cardstock, uh, seven and three quarters wide by seven and a quarter. And we're gonna take both of those and we're gonna score them at half of an inch, okay? Down one side, right? Okay, and then just, um, Fold and burnish out your half inch score. And then when we put these together, we want to put one score line on one, or excuse me, one scored flap on one side and one on the other. So you will have it like so, and these will glue together like this. So you'll add glue or score tape, whatever you're using to this side. So this is my right side, or excuse me, my left side. And I'm gonna place this down before I add glue on my scoreboard just to line me up. And I'm gonna place my paper in there. Just make sure everything looks good. Take it off of your scoreboard and just double check that everything um, is lining up. So this is what you will have. You will have a piece with this open here. Go ahead and burnish out that score line, or excuse me, that <laughs> scored flap. I can't talk today. I'm going to score this one a little bit better. I'm going to add glue just to that half inch flap. Does not take a lot. And then we're just going to fold this in and go up with your paper. That way you don't have too much um, of a warp. You wanna make sure that everything goes upward and this is what you end up with. And this is gonna be a side pocket page. So essentially this will hook onto a hinge in the book 
we're going to notch this out and we're going to put something in here, some photo mats, okay? So that's how you make the side opening pocket page. Next, we're going to do a top opening pocket page. Now, this one will take a seven and three quarter by seven and three quarter by, and a seven and a quarter by seven and a quarter. This one, you don't do to do any scoring. This one, we need to put in at seven and three quarters, score at half, and then we're going to score across the bottom at half, okay? Because technically, this is going to open on the top as well as the, the side, on one side, okay? So this is what we're going to have. Top, and this will hook to the hinge. I'm going to go ahead and miter this bottom corner here and fold my flaps in. Looks like the paper wants to turn the other way, so that's fine. I'm going to cover my writing with paper so that doesn't matter that it's showing. I'm going to go ahead and get these nicely burnished out, make sure they're not overlapping at all. Then you just want to add glue to both of those flaps. And there are lots of different ways that people make pocket pages. Um, this is just the way that I have done it forever. And I'm going to put this in with my open end on this side. I'm going to grab my seven and a quarter by seven and a quarter piece because that's what we're going to have now, seven and a quarter by seven and a quarter when we get those flaps. Okay? And that's upside down. Let's do it this way because I want to know that this is my this is my top and this is my side. So I'm going to go ahead. I don't know what I'm doing here. All right. We are going to go ahead and place this down just like we did the other one. I'm going to make sure that everything lines up nicely before doing any burnishing. And mine is not exact. So I want to go in and just kind of mess with the paper until I get a nice surface. Now, as you can see, this is going to connect to our spine this way, and then this will be our opening, okay? Bottom is closed, side is closed, the top is open, okay? So that is that pocket. So the pocket pages, I wanted to add a little embellishing to mine. This is my side pocket. We have a top pocket and a side pocket, if you remember. I'm going to add some more pockets on one side, being the flip side. And then I'm also going to add, um, obviously I'm going to add paper to one cover. Uh, one of them will have a belly band, the other one will just have uh, the paper on it. And this is somewhat what we will have. So this is what I have laid out for this one. You'll have a, uh, I think they're two and a half is what I did. Let me double check. Yes, these are two and a half inch pockets. So essentially, or excuse me, this one is two and a quarter, I think. Once I did my um, scoring, yes, two and a half. So you have your two and a half inch pocket and that one will be attached on the bottom. And then this one is just going to be attached on the side. So you can slide a large photo mat in this way, and you can slide something smaller in the front one, okay? So I'm going to set that one aside, and I'm going to show you how I did that with the side pocket. So that was my top pocket. I'm going to take two pieces of Artisan Black cardstock. These are going to measure eight and a quarter by three inches. And on the first one, we are going to score at half of an inch lengthwise. So you want to put the, the paper on the scoreboard so that your eight and a quarter is here. So we're going to score at half of an inch and then we're going to score at seven and three quarters of an inch or you can flip it around and score at half of an inch that way. This is going to be our bottom pocket and I want to make sure I did these the same size I did, okay. So then we're going to score at half of an inch all the way down lengthwise. So you'll have three sides that are scored at half of an inch. And that's going to leave us with a two and a half inch bottom pocket here. 
First, you want to miter your corners right at that cross section. And go ahead and fold on your score lines. And once you get those all folded, then burnish them out nicely. You want a nice flat pocket surface before we put this on the book. And where I'm going to actually decorate um, my pockets before I adhere them. So you'll get to see how I do that decorate. And I don't have a step-by-step -step for all of the decorating in this album. Um, I like to leave some of that to your imagination. But what I have um, shown is in areas where magnets go and such so that you can see um, where you need to lay your paper down first. So on the second piece, again, these are three inches by seven and, or excuse me, eight and a quarter. We're only going to score at half of an inch and that's seven and three quarters. Okay. And that is going to give us just half inches on the sides. You do not need to do any other scoring on the second one. Okay. Now I'm going to pull my scoreboard out of here. And I have done this last. Um, in fact, I thought of it after I was done with everything else as far as my decorating goes um, because I wanted to use up my scraps. So what I have here, uh, this is going to be our top pocket and our bottom pocket. Okay. And as you can see, this one stays three inches. So I have cut some papers. I have this fun uh, paper here which has the bees on one side and I am going to put that paper on here and these measure seven and an eighth and then this one it doesn't really matter it just depends on how far you want your paper to go down it just needs to go down enough I made mine two and three quarters um, but I just I want to make sure that it's covered when this pocket is on top of it okay and then my other one is the honeycomb, which is the flip side of this one here. And again, it is seven and an eighth by uh, two. This should be two and three eighths. I think I cut something different here. I thought I cut one at two and three eighths. I did. It was this one. Okay. So I did this backwards. I apologize. I am putting this one on here this way and then our little bees that buzz around are here you could do it the other way as well um, this is just how I'm choosing to do it and then I just have a strip that's going to go across the top of the pocket just for that added um, color and I've just cut a one by seven and a quarter inch strip of scrap that I had left over so that being said I'm not quite sure what happened here I thought that I had cut the honeycomb to the size I wanted and I am seeing that I might have actually let me just see here either way you want to make sure that these are um, seven and an eighth inch long yes that was the one that I wanted there we go okay so now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put these down on the pockets themselves. So I have my bottom pocket with my bees. I'm going to glue this to the pocket before I adhere it to the page. As soon as I can get my glue to open. There we go. It was quite stuck. So I'm just going to glue this down to the page or to the pocket. And again, this is our bottom pocket. Just line that up nicely. And you could cut these at seven um, if you like more of that black border. Um, then you would cut them seven inches long and then an eighth of an inch um, smaller this way. So there's our bottom pocket. And then we have that beehive paper and I'm going to glue that to the second pocket and just eyeball this you can make this as big as the paper I did not like I said I'm using up my scraps so this is 
not going to show with this on top of it, but it also is not the full length of the paper. If you're picky and you um, want this to cover, um, then you can cut your pocket smaller. I The other one I think I did do too um, at that uh, two and a half inch pocket. So it was a three inch piece of paper. Um, and then I, I didn't cut this one down. So that is what I did differently. I'm going to double check my no, it is three. Okay. So first you're going to grab your pocket, which is this. I'm going to use the side that I wrote on for the full page cover. So I'm going to go on the back side here. And I want to put this one on first. And I just kind of want to see where it's going to go. So grab your bottom pocket and place it down all the way at the bottom of the page and line it up just to make sure that these are, this is matching this and that it is covering um, what I didn't cover in paper. And you can do this down as far as you like. So first I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna adhere this one. Just add glue to those two half inch side flaps. And again, I'm gonna place this down so I can see about where I want this to go. I'm going to go down just a little bit. And let's see here. A little bit more. And just line it up. Make sure that all of your sides are aligning on um, the page so that you don't have a crooked pocket. That works. And then just burnish out your glue area. Remember, we just glued the flaps. We don't want to glue this down. This is going to be like a belly band would be adhered. However, we're going to cover it with another pocket. So then I'm going to burnish these out so that they're nice and flat, these score lines on this pocket. I did not do that um, previously. And I want to add glue to those flaps. So now I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to adhere this one right at the bottom. Lining it up with the other one helps. And there we go. And I'm going to burnish out my glue. And now you have two fun pockets. And then I'm just going to add a strip, like I said, of paper. Uh, mine is this black and white. This one did not cut straight, so I'm going to cut another one. Um, but it will be a one-inch strip that goes across the top. You can do anything you want there. Uh, so that is that pocket. I'm going to go ahead and decorate my backside so I can show you um, what I'm doing on the back here, which is just going to be a simple uh, belly band system. So I've cut a piece of black artisan. Uh, this is two and a quarter inches wide. Um, which I probably want two. I'm probably going to cut that down to two. So we'll do two by eight and a quarter. I'm going to go ahead and stick this one in my cutter and make it two because I'm not sure I'm fond of that big wide look. All right, slice a little bit of that off and we will have two inches by eight and a quarter. And that is just going to go on my scoreboard lengthwise. And I'm going to do a half of an inch and seven and three quarters, which is the other half at the other end. And I'm going to fold those. And this is going to go on this way. Okay. So I'm going to find the middle. Actually, this is the wrong one. <laughs> I crap. This one goes on this one uh, because we do have to cover... Um, the, the, the writing. I have to cover my writing. But essentially we will have a belly band here. And then I've taken a piece of the baby blue artisan and I cut that to four inches by six inches. And that will be adhered to the middle of this. So it's just glued in the middle on the belly band. And then I will place one of the four by six journaling cards that I cut down uh, to 
three and seven eighths by five and seven eighths. And that's just going to go right here. And then we can slide a nice little um, photo mat behind there. Easy peasy stuff. So this one, um, I did the exact same way. And I'm just going to add my uh, papers to this. And I will be back with the rest of the video. Okay, so I decided to add another little element on this page, which is the backside of our top pocket, back in the back. And what I'm gonna do here, now that I have scraps and stuff left over, I'm gonna be embellishing this. You will have seen this, like I said, in the very beginning uh, when I did the full walkthrough of this. But I wanted to show you how I did this. So I took a scrap of the paper that is um, seven and eight inches long. And I took another little scrap of black paper and I wrapped that around this, leaving enough space before I glued it that this will slide, okay? Now, I've also taken one of the ephemera pieces from the collection, glued it to um, a thinner black chipboard, and then I cut around that, I fussy cut around, um, leaving a little bit of black border, okay? So now what I'm gonna do is I am going to take this with the side that I glued together, the hard side there, where you see the split. I'm gonna add glue to this. And I am simply gonna glue this first in the middle of my chipboard embellishment here. Get that on there nice and good. And once I have that, make sure there's no excess glue because we don't want our little band there to um, get stuck. So now I'm gonna put this in, make sure that everything is nice and straight, and it is. So now what I'm gonna do is I am just gonna add glue to the sides of this little belly band, just a tiny little strip of glue on either side. Just kind of pull your in the middle. And then I'm gonna place this on the page where I want it. Not quite all the way at the bottom, but close. Make sure it's nice and straight. And then I will furnish it out. And what that's gonna give me is a fun little belly band, band, belly band, I can't talk today, with the fun little slide mechanism, which I've done in videos in the past, and I had all this, so I just thought that would be fun. And then when I slide my uh, photo mat, when I get one made in here, um, it gives it even more of a hold. And then this is a nice little sentiment added to it. Okay, so now I have decorated both of my pocket sides, and I placed a piece of the green solid at seven and an eighth by seven and an eighth to be a background for this. Now I, as I showed you the belly band, I decided I liked with the green background, I preferred the yellow um, to uh, mat my four by six card. It's still four by six. This is three and seven eighths by four and seven eighths. And we are just gonna adhere this to the back side in the middle of this. So what I'm gonna do, so I'm gonna place this right in the middle of that card. And I am going to give myself a little guide with a pencil. I am just going to make a couple little tick marks on either side so I make sure I only glue within those boundaries. So I'm just gonna run a squiggle of glue all the way down but staying within those little boundaries there, okay? And I then I'm going to put my belly band back on here. Like so. And we should be, if we put it where we made those tick marks, um, I should have the same amount of space all the way, up and down, and it will be straight. As long as I stay with my tick marks. Okay, so I'm gonna just burnish that down and re-burnish my half inch gussets, top and bottom. And then I am going to add this to my page. Now, 
This is going to be, on this one, the flip side will be the pockets and the front will be the, the belly band. On the top opening, <clears throat> our pockets will be our front and this blank, or not really blank, this decorated page for a larger photo will be on the back. So let's add glue to our gussets, our half inch little flaps here. And I'm going to place this in the middle of the page. And you can use a pencil and measure this if you want it exactly in the middle. Um, I am not doing that. I just want it on the page. So I'm not being a perfectionist about this one. And there, as you can see, we have a belly band that has this fun decorative edge. And I got some glue over here my handy dandy adhesive eraser. So now you can see that what we have for our side pocket page is going to be um, this fun belly band on one side and then our fun little pocket system on the back which I still need to cut um, that seven and a quarter by one inch strip to go across the top. I have not done that yet. So let's go ahead and put these in the book and how I'm going to do that is yes, we have our half inch, um, our little L gussets that we put on. And I just want to decide which one I want in first. Do I want the belly band or do I want the other one? I'm going to put the belly band one in my front and this one in the back because of the way the papers line up. So how I'm going to do this is I'm going to add some score tape to the inside to this piece here and I don't want it right up against the um, score you want it up a, as close to the edge the outside edge as you can get it and I did miter these just so you know if I did not go over that previously um, I did go back in and I mitered my corners on my gussets so that they, the pockets, pocket pages slip over them a little nicer if you do. If not, you need to make them an eighth of an inch shorter than the pocket opening. And I got that one a little close to that score line, but that's okay. It should be fine. So now what I want to do, now that I have score tape on both sides of that gusset, I'm going to burnish out the tape really well. And then I'm going to peel it back on one side first, but not all the way because I want to be able to pull it. Well, I'm going to pull the first one off all the way. The bottom one, we're not going to pull off just yet. We want to line this first. So we're going to slip this over that half inch. It's a little tricky. Don't go all the way down. Just go to where your tape is. You want to be able to close it and have it still be nice and straight. So there's that. Now I'm going to go up inside of here and I am going to peel back my tape. And it looks like I need to go down a little bit further, but I can use my uh, tape eraser. I'm going to use a little pick here and I'm just going to get a hold of that tape and I'm going to pull it out of there. And I'm going to adhere it on that side. And as you can see, I got my tape, like I said, a little too close to the score line here. Um, so be cautious of that. I'm going to use this adhesive eraser and get that extra tape off of there. And then just push your pocket all nice and neat down. And now we have our side pocket page and you can put something inside of there. Super fun. All right, now for the top pocket page. This one will have an opening on your side here on the left, and then you have your top. So this will go in the same way. I've got all this stuff back here for decorating. I'm gonna do my score tape. <clears throat> Try to do it a little bit better this time. I want it to be as close to this 
edge over here without going over, more so than wanting it near um, where it meets the, the spine of the book this time. And you want to do it the same on both sides because um, the page is going to adhere that way. So if that makes sense. Well, if I can get a hold of my tape. Again, I'm going to pull it over so that it's not going over that little flap, but it's at the very edge of it. So I want it more this way. All right, peel that first one off. Push up any extra off the corner there. And then we will go ahead and do the same thing. We're just gonna slide this in here. If it cooperates with me. Got to leave a little bit of space, and that should be good there. All right, I'm going to flip this over, and I'm going to go underneath here and grab that score tape on this side and see that's the difference. By putting that tape closer to the end, the raw side of our little hinge, I don't have all that excess glue there that I need to um, go back in and fix. So now you have a nice top pocket. Okay. That is my album for the pockets. So next I'm going to show you how we're going to put our magnets in here. But first I'm going to get some of my, um, you know what, no, I'm just going to go ahead and show you. So what we want to do with these little bands and I've cut this in two, so I should have cut one long piece. I would suggest cutting one long piece. I am going to grab a magnet set. I'm using the small basic grays for this part. I'm going to grab a plus and a minus. And I am going to put those together. And I'm going to peel the backing off of one of the magnets. So in my case, it's the plus that's facing me. So I'm just going to grab that. And I'm going to put this on the band right up in here somewhere. It does not exactly matter as long as they hold. Then we're gonna peel off the backing of the other, as soon as I can get it to peel. Sometimes the sticky stuff on here just does not wanna come loose. And I'm gonna pull my paper off of here and I'm gonna close this up. So we know that magnet meets I'm going to pull that open, okay? That should hold everything nice and snug. All right. And that shows you where your magnets go. And then you can cover it with your paper, like so, okay? So that is where that last magnet goes. And then, of course, you're going to want to make some fun photo mats to slide into your pockets and... Um, little inserts for other things. It's just a super, super fun album. And I will be, as you've seen in the walkthrough at the beginning of my video, um, I'll go over how I decorated it and um, show you how I used utilized the sticker sheet um, and what kind of inserts that I made and how I made them. So um, it turns out I had cut these at six and three eighths instead of six and a quarter by that four and three quarters. Um, either way you want to do it works. Um, I would suggest six and a quarter by four and three quarters just because um, it's a more rounded number, plus it's perfect for four by six photos, but this works too. I also decided that five waterfall pages is plenty. If you put any more, um, you would need to do the band closure uh, rather than this little pocket closure, because how this is going to work is we're basically going to have um, some sort of bifold and it will sit in the pocket, but it'll be uh, this size and I'll be using one of the uh, landscape ones and it'll hold our waterfall closed and that's that's what I'm gonna do uh, with mine if you don't want to do it that way um, you can put more waterfalls you could get two more which is seven um, and then you would want to put a band with a magnet okay so that's just an option 
the ways that the reason I like doing these pockets is because I can also stick something behind here. Um, it gives me a pocket to put things, and I like that option. So that is that. And next, we're just going to have um, decorating this and adding our pocket pages on once I get those decorated. And we will also have uh, this to decorate, which was gonna be decorated exactly identical to the back. We're gonna put the blue paper down, uh, the light blue artisan, and that same, um, or excuse me, probably not the same, but another patterned paper from the collection, okay? All right, so for this front pocket, our uh, front section, under the cover, um, what I'm going to do here is I have cut a piece of that blue, uh, again, seven and uh, three eighths by seven and three eighths. And then I grabbed a piece of the beehive paper. It has the yellow and black check on the back. It is called Busy Beehive. Okay, and I cut that down to seven um, and a quarter by seven and a quarter. And I'm gonna use both pieces Okay, so we're gonna put this up here. So let's go ahead and put this down first. Um, this is where we're gonna have to have a magnet though. So I wanna make sure that I put my magnet on. And I'm gonna use the large magnet, uh, basic grays. And I'm gonna attach that first. So I'm gonna grab a plus and a minus of my magnets here. put them together this way so that my stickies are on opposite sides and I want this to close here you can put two if you prefer um, if you want your book to close over here too um, I'm just going to do one so I'm going to take one of these and I am going to stick it make sure that you put it in about an inch that way you can cover it with paper and right around the middle there and then I'm gonna peel my sticky off of here. Um, if it'll peel off, it's sticking good. Okay, and I'm just gonna hold my book, close it how I want it closed. And that is where we're gonna want it to close. And that will pick up the magnet on this side before we do any decorate. Okay, so now I have my inside page, <clears throat> excuse me decorated and I did this like I did the covers but instead of doing it on the side I've done it on the bottom here um, just pieced out my paper and what I'm going to do here my magnet is underneath here as I showed you I did change the paper um, from showing you where the magnet went now I'm going to show you an easy way to use one of your four by four journaling cards that you get with the paper collection to make a fun little pocket that's going to go on this page so what you want to do is grab a piece of your black uh, cardstock that measures three and a quarter by, or excuse me, three and three quarters. Wow, four and three quarters by four and three quarters, and put it on your scoreboard. Score it half of an inch, turn it once, and score it half of an inch again. And that's going to give you a half inch here and a half inch on the bottom. Then what you want to do is miter that corner right there, those corners at the intersection, giving you that. We're going to fold these score lines down. And then, once I know those are not overlapping, I'm going to set this down. I'm going to put glue on the back of my 4x4 four four journaling card. And I've just chosen one that I liked, the same, and that coordinated well with the paper on that page. And then I'm just going to put this on here, leaving some of that black all the way around as a frame. Line that up. And try to get that as straight as I can. I'm going to burnish out and get any excess glue off of there. And then... I'm going to grab my book, and open it up to that page. I'm going to flip this over so that I have a nice flat surface. Now, and remember, your magnet is over here, and you don't want to cover that, because you want to keep as much strength. The magnet I put in here is actually under the green paper you see here. 
So we are, sorry, there's some children outside making a whole lot of noise. What I want to do is put this right about here so that it's kind of not, I don't want it all the way down in the corner. I like it up about half of an inch on both sides in. So I'm going to add glue. to my flaps and then I'm just going to place this. I'm going to put it, like I said, about half of an inch off to the side and half of an inch up. Then once I get that centered the way I like it, I'm going to grab my ruler just to make sure what I've got here. Uh, about almost half of an inch and almost half of an inch. And then I'm just going to flip my book around so that I can burnish this out a little nicer. I'm just going to make sure I'm in camera here. Burnish those flaps down. Now, go ahead and burnish it a little more just to get a good stick. Now we have this fun little pocket. So you can put a photo mat, which I will probably put one in here, um, on that page as well. So that is another fun way to use the cut apart. Um, I will be adding more um, embellishing and um, other things in this and um, show you how to do the rest.